Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we are looking into cooling systems again and specifically engine cooling for the pre-built engines. If you know from my previous videos, we were having issues cooling off the pre-built large engines, especially the ones that I use in my ships. With the release of the new update yesterday, we want to see if anything was fixed and what is going on now. The first thing worth noting is I've spawned the Alta tanker here. And previously, or in my previous videos, it was overheating very quickly. You can see here we've driven away from the creative starter base, or creative island. And if I go here to my engine temperature, you could see it is 54. And that's at 100% throttle. So clearly something has been changed. Because if you remember in my last video, by the time we got to the bridge there, the engines had already overheated fully and were reducing the throttle or reducing the speed to like 18 knots or 15 knots or whatever. So here we are. We're able to continue on at a steady top speed at 100% throttle at less temperature at without overheating, let's say. I have changed the microcontroller a little bit, but I did not change the principal system that was being used. What I mean there is inside the microcontroller here, I did actually release a V9 version. I reduced the fan engine temperature to 50 and I did just a little bit of rework inside my um, clutch slash um, what is this the auto generator start microcontroller if the battery is less than a certain whatever battery power start up the engine blah blah blah. Um, I did not change the cooling system however if we go here to the engine you will see it is exactly the same system as previous where we just had the um, radiator fan here or rather here plugged in to the large engines so the system is identical there have been no changes yet there's been a change in the game i love to see it i love to see the game being fixed and worked on on a daily basis this gives me great hope for the game and the developers are proactively working on solutions for us. So thank you developers, this type of action is really appreciated. It gives me great hope and sort of gives me the motivation to keep making cool new creations such as the RSV Akimbo you see here. I know I talked about this in previous videos. Now the cooling system in it is working properly so that's always awesome to see. If we look at the update notes here for update v1.9.18 you can see here that they have um, been working on fixes for this including some security measures and whatnot but if you look here rework balancing wide scale adjustment to fluid pressures and flow through doors so that's going to change things rebalance the water jet energy conversion to match old behavior we're going to take a look at that Reduced air scoop reaction, rebalanced engine cooling and heat. That could be what we're seeing here. They reduced the large firebox and diesel burner coolant capacity to rework heat transfer, improved flow in restricted scenarios, um, and then other things for the weapons and sort of other types of solutions. So thumbs up for the developers. I love to see it. Now, if I spawn up the old um, cooling testing platform here that I showed in previous videos, we're going to see exactly how they're affected based on this new change. So we're going to fire up all the engines and again try to put the um, throttle at call it 80% or thereabouts, 85, that'll do the trick. And if we watch these numbers now, you can see there's a wide variety of the cooling and coolant that we see happening here. So from the top, the very first one here uses the heat sink. Second one is our base case where it just uses a radiator, exactly what we have on the ship that I just showed you. In this case, we've added a coolant tank or two coolant tanks with our radiator setup. So that's number three. Number four, we got two radiators that should be working better than one single radiator, obviously. Here we have a system that uses the seawater. You can see it's pumping down to the seawater. And in this one, we've added pumps. Okay, so seawater plus the pumps, where here we're just using the built-in engine pumps. 
over here we have the exchanger so we have the coolant floating through the exchanger and the exchanger mixing with the seawater now obviously i know there's comments saying that's not an optimal system because you're relying on the coolant um, heat transfer but that's okay we're just giving it a test and then over here we have a joint system of a radiator then going through the heat exchanger so let's see how all them work independently so our heat sink is at 51 our regular radiator is just behind it so you can see here it was around 52 and this one is around 51 so just behind it the one with the tanks is actually the highest one so it's interesting i thought if you add more liquid to the solution it'll take longer to um it'll take longer to, to increase the temperature of that coolant but no here we have case three is much higher case four is the one with the two radiator setups so it's not even reached 60 but actually it is more than a single radiator which funny enough if i go over here you can see that the fan is off in all these cases here the fan's true because we've reached a certain temperature of the engine but you'd think that these would be the highest or best setup but no our engine is at 61 in that case whereas a single radiator we're at 55. then over here we got a cool 21 so the one that it's mixing with the seawater is 21 definitely the lowest except for this one so our and now we're getting we're getting logical results people in the one where we have our pumps facilitating the transfer we're actually at 18 degrees so for the same throttle and or same rps across the board that's what's important we're getting a massive difference in temperatures so 18 degrees with the pumps over here we got 28 degrees where we're mixing the heat exchange with the engine which makes sense because the water is cool enough that it's keeping this one down to 18 so this one would be logically uh, lower because we're just mixing the coolant with the cold seawater and of course our pumps are on so we're having faster transfer of the power or oh uh, sorry of the cooling power and very last we have a setup with both a radiator and heat exchanger so now actually everything is working logically i love to see this i love to see that developers have put this system back in place i really hope that this can stay maybe maybe not this low let's call it like i know now they've almost maybe over overcorrected because it makes any kind of intricate system almost not worth it i mean if we're at 57 on a regular heat sink and 54 at a simple radiator obviously these guys are quite high but then we're at a super low 18 degrees here now i'm going to turn up the throttle all the way and see where the numbers kind of settle with full throttle if you recall in the last video at 100 percent throttle these engines were all exploding and that's definitely not what i want to see so in this case will any of them explode so we've increased the temperatures heat, heat sink is well, well we'll let it we'll let everything kind of settle on their steady state temperature and then i'll get back we're back here everything has kind of settled down it seems we're at around 16 or 17 rps across the board heat sink 62 degrees regular simple radiator 57 and a half so that's at 100 percent throttle at almost 17 rps we're less than 16 degrees 60 degrees so that's a huge difference in what we were previously seeing previously all these setups were exploding so amazing i'm so happy this is actually well fun fact today's my birthday this is the best birthday present to get from the stormworks developers is my ships working properly so thank you over here we got ourselves the one with the water tanks or the additional coolant again the highest so this is the worst setup over here we're actually a little higher um with the one that has twin radiators so i there's definitely something illogical there for me but these ones are super low but maybe they have to be slowed down like it's possible 
that they, we have to have some sort of valves. But again, if you remember what I said in the last video, yes, I believe one can make an intricate cooling system. I'm looking after simplicity here. I'm looking at the simplest solution, the easiest solution, let's call it, for cooling your engine. And right now it is just my previous radiator setup, but even a heat sink seems to be doing the trick. Okay, so we said having the coolant, extra coolant does not help us. Having two radiators, interesting enough, does not help us. Seawater is the way to go. We're at 25 and 21 for just using the seawater. So seawater with a pump is incredibly effective now. Now we have this heat exchanger solution is still lower than a radiator, which is nice to see. So that actually increases the efficiency just having that. And lastly, here we have our intricate setup of a radiator plus the heat exchanger at 27 thereabouts. So lowest one now is our simple water or seawater exchanger with pumps, followed by having the um, seawater exchanger, no pumps, just a simple pipe going right into the water. So that's the, these two are the most effective. Least effective is the one with um, this uh, extra coolant tanks. And I put fresh water in them, funny enough. So coolant tanks, least effective, followed by twin radiators, which little counterproductive, but it seems to be the trick. And overall, I would rate the most simple solution. Well, this is the most simple, just pipe into the ocean. But following this, I would just say our previous radiator setup where we just have a radiator and this radiator hasn't even triggered the on because I believe on would hit once this engine reaches 60. So we're actually not even on on the radiator and it's keeping it nice and cool. So amazing to see. Uh, I do love this. So thank you developers. And one more honorable mention on the comment section of my Alta Tanker user by the name of AC Goalie had a cooling solution that allows pre-built engines to run at 100 RPS. I don't know if that's a typo or not, but 100 RPS below 32 degrees Celsius. And they have a example of their sort of cooling solution using a variety of pumps and valves and intake things. So this solution it is cool to see that there has been progress and users that have been sort of developing and coming up with cool solutions. Wow, it is not a typo. We're getting 100 RPS out of these pre-built engines. And we are, this one's overheating. This one's at 100. This one's at 22. And this one's at 21. So the system that is proposed here by user AC Goalie seems to work. So if you guys are interested, make sure to take a look at their solution, their proposed solution here, and see if you're interested in utilizing 100 RPS. But what I want to say is that I always love when the community engages my builds, comes up with solutions, discusses them between the group, whether in my Discord server, whether on comments on my creations or comments on my YouTubes. I love to see that kind of interactive and uh, collaborative thinking process. On a final note, I will say that currently, as of this last update, the water jet engines are not fully fixed. You can see that they are revving out or maxing revolutions and not getting the top speed they were previously. Now, I did not go and change any of my gearing on these ships. I know that there were some people saying that now gearing for the um, water jet engines has to change because of the, um, the new update. So I didn't actually change any of my gearing that I currently have on my water jet setups. So I will look into that if and when the developers have a more so, so like a stable solution for this. I guess what I'm saying is that I don't want to go and change the gear ratios only to have it get changed back soon enough um, if they release a fix for this. As we saw, there was a fix that said the water jet um, was back to how it was previously. I don't quite see it, so maybe they're working on it. So for now, my water jet powered ships are going to be a little less functional and useful, unfortunately. But rest assured, once we have a stable solution, I will change them, whether it is the gearing 
that I have to adjust down here for these engines, like just this. I will if need be. I have no problem with that. Gearing is easy to do. But I don't want to really change it yet unless it is confirmed that that is the final state. Just the same way that I didn't want to change any of this, the cooling solutions. And you can see in here my engines cooling is identical to what you have in my other ship. Just a simple radiator connected to the large engine. Now at least they should be working properly. So huge kudos to the developers. Thank you for the fix. And I'm so happy to finally kind of have my mojo back. I'm now tempted and really keen on making new creations. If you haven't already watched my previous videos, there is currently a mini challenge going on where I gave users the ability to develop this floor and this floor here and kind of create their own solution or proposed solution to how the interior of the RSV Akimbo should look. Depending on what I see and what I like, I may get inspired to make some sort of fun interior based on what I see, or I'm just going to make it standard or what I standard or kind of sta more standardly, I guess, or commonly do for these ships. And if that's the case, I expect this creation to be out very shortly here and maybe within a week or two. So stay tuned for that. And as always, happy Stormworksing everyone. I'm thank thankful for all of you for joining us in this video. Until next time.